Greetings everyone and welcome to another classic WoW.Live guide. Today I am proud to announce we're going to be going over the classic WoW Melee Mechanics Guide. All of the data for this guide has been compiled and analyzed by Meiji, Vilius, and beta testers from the Fight Club Warrior Discord. Also, this guide would not be possible without the foundational work done by Beza in Early Vanilla. I will be presenting this guide, but I just want to say again, thank you so much to Meiji, Vilius, and the Fight Club beta testers for doing this, compiling this data. It's a lot of work, and we're going to go over the mechanics that are going to be fundamental and really important to know if you're a melee class, progressing through PvE content. Chiefly for warriors and rogues, however, there is information in this guide that's relevant for shamans, paladins, hunters, and druids. The link for the Fight Club Club Warrior Discord is in the description below. And as with all my guides, there are timestamps in the pinned comment below so you can navigate this guide at your own pace. Also, there will be a link to Google Slides so you can read these slides whenever you want or if you don't want to watch the actual video. And as of course with all my guides, it will be available on ClassicWow.Live. Let's get started. All of the information in this guide is based off of the research done by Meiji and the Fight Club Discord. All of their results and findings are located in their GitHub page. There is a link in the description, or if you're looking at the Google Slides, you can click right on the link there. I highly recommend going over there and looking how much work they actually did to compile this data. It's actually pretty amazing. So we're going over armor, hit tables and misses, glancing blows, dodges, blocks, parry and parry haste, critical strike, and crit suppression. Anytime you see a battle.net logo, that means that that information has been confirmed by Blizzard in a blue post. Let's first start with armor. So when you're fighting mobs anywhere, but mostly we're going to be talking about in raid settings here, there are three types of mobs when we consider armor class. There are warriors that are high armor, paladins that are medium armor, and mages that are low armor. And this goes for all mobs in the game. Even though it may not look like a warrior or a paladin or a mage, their armor class falls into one of these three categories. Now mobs without mana bars are warrior types. Most mobs with mana bars are paladin types. However, some mobs with mana bars are mage types. And this goes for mobs and bosses. So mob stands for monster or beast, which is a general term people throw out there for anything you're fighting, but we're talking about everything you can fight in the game. Not players, there are some special circumstances with players, we're talking about all NPC monsters you can kill or bosses. Now, Meiji and crew have done some excellent work compiling armor values for many different monsters and beasts in the game. There is a spreadsheet that has all this information. It's not complete, of course, because the beta was only at the level 40, and there are some monsters people just didn't get around to, but a lot of data was compiled and collected. If you want to see that spreadsheet, there will be a link in the description. And make sure to bookmark and keep an eye on it, because it will be completed once the game launches. Now, most raid bosses in Classic will be warriors and have 3,731 armor. Now, this is significantly lower than most private servers. 3,731 armor can actually be reduced to zero armor using five stacks of sun armor, curse of recklessness, fairy fire, and three stacks of annihilator. If you have all those, the armor value of that boss will be zero. That means there is no physical damage reduction from melee, aside from glancing blows, which we'll get to in a second. And there's an armor calculation where you can determine that. So say you are fighting a warrior type boss and there is no armor reduction, which is pretty much impossible because you need to use sun armor to hold threat. But let's pretend that there was that scenario. If that boss had that much armor, that would result in a 40.5% physical damage reduction. So if you can reduce that number to zero, that's a huge increase in DPS, something to keep in mind when fighting raid bosses in Classic WoW, that you can increase damage significantly by bringing that armor value down. So Annihilator may be something that's very important to look into, especially before Phase 3 when Nightfall comes out. Now this equation on the bottom left here is pretty accurate, however there is perhaps a mechanic for level 60 characters fighting a raid boss, it could be a different equation, we are not sure about this, however this is an excellent approximation, so it will be somewhere around the 40% range. And remember, this is for most raid bosses, and this is for warrior types. So if they're not a warrior type, they'll have even less armor. Requiring less debuffs to get them to zero armor. Okay, now let's talk about hit tables. Players have an 8% chance to miss a mob three levels higher than them. So, raid bosses. However, the melee hit cap is 9% because the first 1% of any plus hit gain from talents or gear is negated on mobs with more than 10 defense skill above the attacking player's weapon skill. So the difference between their defense skill and your weapon skill, if it's 10 or more, that first 1% of hit you get from talents or gear is negated. So you need 9% to hit if you're at 300 weapon skill. A recurring thing in this guide will be how important weapon skill 
is, and this is just part one. If your weapon skill is 305, it's orcs and humans here, this hit modifier is no longer in place. This means with orcs with axes and humans with swords or maces have a hit cap and a chance to miss of 6%, not 9%. Let's use the equations on the right to calculate this example. Let's pretend we have a level 60 troll with an axe fighting a boss. Trolls do not have axe specialization. The equation is 5% plus the level of the mob you're fighting times 5 minus weapon skill times 0.2%. That leaves us with an 8% chance to miss. And because they have 300 weapon skill, they're going to need to get 9% hit to get hit capped. However, in the other example, our level 60 orc, also fighting a boss with an axe, has 305 weapon skill, leaving them with only a 6% chance to miss, and since they have 305 weapon skill, they only have to get 6% hit. I know this is a little bit confusing, but just think of it this way. If you're at max weapon skill, you have to get an extra percent chance to hit in order to be hit capped. Now let's go over misses. Misses can occur whether you're attacking from the front of the boss or mob or the back. It doesn't matter what side you're on, you can always miss. If you have max weapon skill at level 60, which is 300 if you're not an orc or a human, your chance to miss when fighting mobs of the following levels is as follows. Level 60, 5%. Level 61, 5.5%. Level 62, 6%. Level 63, 8%. However, if you have 305 weapon skill, your chance to miss level 60 is 4.5%. 61, 5%. Level 62, 5.5%. And level 63, 6%. Now, these are for two-handers. If you are dual wielding, then to determine your miss chance for white hits, take 80% of your two-hand miss chance and add 20 so for example, if your two-handed miss is 5%, 5 times 0.8 is 4%, 4 plus 20 is 24%. Remember, yellow attacks as miss chance is the same as two-handed, so there is no extra penalty for yellows when you're dual wielding. White hit miss chance dual wielding with 300 skill, level 60 is 24, 61 is 24.4, level 62 is 24.8, and level 63 is 26.4%. However, if you have 305 skill, it is reduced a bit, 23.5% up to 24.4% at level 63. So just keep in mind, weapon skill does have an effect in dual wielding as well but if you're dual wielding your chance to miss is much higher okay glancing blows are next glancing blows can occur when attacking from the front or back on white hits only and they cannot crit so yellow attacks can glance and critical strikes cannot glance the formula to determine glancing a chance is 10 percent plus the mob level times five minus either the attacker level times five or your weapon skill, whatever is lower times 2%. This formula means that increasing your weapon skill cannot decrease your chance to glance. But if you have less than max weapon skill, glances will actually increase in occurrence. So you always wanna make sure you're at at least max weapon skill. The racials won't help you here, but that will get you at the lowest chance to glance, which is 40%. But that'll get you at the lowest chance to glance, which for raid bosses is 40 40%. So 40% of your attacks will glance. Now what you can do with weapon skill is reduce the damage penalty of those glances. So to determine the glancing damage reduction, you have to figure out the low end and the high end of the damage reduction. So the low end is the absolute value of 1 minus 1.3 minus 0.05 times the NPC defense skill, which for raid bosses is 315 minus your weapon skill. And for the high end, it's a slightly different equation. You get those two numbers and you average them and that is your or average damage penalty of the glance. So it's a 40% chance to get a reduction in physical damage of 35% if you're at max weapon skill against the boss. However, if you are at 305 weapon skill, it will only be a 15% damage reduction. That's a difference of 20% and that's pretty damn huge. This is another reason why weapon skill is so important. And you may be thinking, well, I'm an orc, I'm gonna get edge master hand guards as well, which only works for one handers, but still, the idea is there, right? Well, you can only reach a theoretical maximum of 308 weapon skill as far as glancing blows are concerned. You can only reach a glancing minimum of 5% damage reduction. So yes, they do help, but that first five weapon skills you get from your racial is much more impactful at a 20% reduction in the damage reduction. I know it's confusing, but weapon skill from racial is very, very important, especially since it goes for two-handed axes and one-handed axes for orcs and both two-handed and one-handed maces and swords for humans. This is how glancing blows work. You will glance 40% of the time against bosses, no matter what. However, you can control how much physical damage reduction is coming out due to your weapon skill. If you're a caster class, there's actually a totally different rule set for glancing blows, but we're not gonna go over that because it doesn't matter because casters should not be meleeing, so we won't be going over that. And what I mean by casters are the clothies, priests, warlocks, and mages. 
So we've been talking about weapon skill a lot. Let's go over a weapon skill breakdown just to see how really potent it is and what it really can do. The table to the right uses the formulas that we've went over to fill in the missing values of glancing damage, penalty, and mischance. The first column, the delta defense by skill, means the difference between defense of the mob you're fighting and your weapon skill. So that's what that number is. The next column is the glancing penalty, how much less damage you're doing with your auto attacks. The mischance is your chance to miss and what your hit cap needs to be so you don't miss. So this is a good table to look at. I would keep an eye on this depending on what your weapon skill is so you know how much less damage you're doing, what your miss chance, and what your hit cap is. Now the parenthetical values you see in parentheses here are the data that was actually compiled by Meiji and his team. So these numbers are very close to what the theoretical number should be. They just wanted to provide their data. Now in addition to reducing the chance to miss and the glancing bill penalty, additional weapon skill will also reduce the chance for a mob to dodge your attack. We're going to talk about that in a second. And it also can affect white hit crit indirectly. The more hit you have, the more room there is for crit on on the hit table. We'll talk about that when we talk about one versus two roll systems, when we talk about white hits and yellow hits for the crit section, but we're gonna get there in a second. Now let's go over dodge. Creatures at your level have a 5% chance to dodge your attacks from the front or behind, doesn't matter where you're attacking from. Each additional level difference between you and the mob grants an extra 0.5% chance to dodge. Therefore, bosses, which are level 63, have a 6.5% chance to dodge. Each point of defense over the attacker's attack skill adds 0.04% dodge against players and 0.1 against mobs. So we went over the mobs in the previous example, but it's also interesting to note that it adds a 0.04% dodge against players, this difference between defense and the attacker's attack skill. Conversely, each point of defense below the attacker's attack skill removes 0.04% dodge against players and 0.1 against mobs. So if you have 305 weapon skill, you reduce the boss's chance to dodge by 0.5%. So instead of 6.5% chance to dodge, they'll only have a 6% chance to dodge, which is a nice little increase your DPS. Another reason why weapon skill is important. Now there are some examples here on the right, so let's look over the formulas for dodge. If the target is a mob, the dodge chance is 5% plus the target level times 5 minus the attacker weapon skill times 0.1%. As we said before, at 300 skill, that results in a 6.5% chance to dodge, and at 305 skill, a 6% chance to dodge. Now, if the target is a player, the player's dodge chance is that target's player's dodge, whatever that dodge is, plus the target player's defense skill minus the attacker's weapon skill times 0.1%. So it's like a dodge bonus or handicap they get if there's a difference between the defense skill and the target's weapon skill. So weapon skill does have an effect, but it's a lot smaller than what we're talking about in PCs or mobs. Now let's move on to block. Block is actually relatively simple. It's important to realize that mobs can block attacks from the front only and cannot block arrows or gunshot from any angle. So there you go, hunters. Also, all mobs can block whether they are physically holding a shield or not. It doesn't matter if it's Kel'Thuzad, Myxna or Ragnaros, all of them can block. It doesn't matter if they're holding a shield or not. Block, interestingly, is fixed at 5% regardless of the difference between the mob's defense skill and your weapon skill. It doesn't matter, it's a flat 5%. So this is an actually easy to think about. Block will always be 5%. However, some wonky things happen below level 10. If a mob is a level nine or lower, they do not block as frequently as mobs level 10 and above. And this is an unknown mechanic or equation. Next, let's get into parry and parry haste. Now, mobs can only parry a attacks from the front. If you're DPS, always try to get behind the boss because they'll not be able to block or parry you. Now mobs your level have a base 5% chance to parry your attacks. And parry chance increases non-linearly as the level difference between you and the mob increases. So you're fighting level 60 mob, they have a 5% chance to parry. Level 61 mob has a 5.5% chance to parry. The level 62 mob has a 6% chance to parry. And the level 63 mob has a 14% chance to parry. This is huge. And if a player or NPC, doesn't matter, parries an attack, the time between their next attack is reduced according to the following rules. This is known as parry haste. If the time remaining until the next swing is more than 60% of the total swing timer, the time of the next swing is reduced by 40% of the speed of the weapon. If the time remaining until the next swing is less than 20% of the total swing timer, there is no speed increase. Otherwise, the time of the next swing is reduced by the time remaining minus 20% of the swing timer. Here's three examples to explain that pretty simply. And the mob swing timer here is two seconds. 
So for the first one, the mob parries your attack just after it swings. So there's two seconds left until its next swing. Parry haste causes the next mob hit to happen in 1.2 seconds instead of two. A mob parries your attack with 0.1 seconds left until its next swing. There's no increase in speed, no speed up. And finally, the mob parries your attack with 0.5 seconds left until its next swing and parry haste causes the mob's next hit to happen in 0.1 seconds instead of 0.5. These are just examples, but you can use the equations above to determine parry haste. Now again, you benefit from parry haste and so do NPCs. So because of the increase in parry chance from private servers, tanks are going to be getting hit a little bit harder per unit time. So this could make raid encounters a little bit more difficult. But remember, because of the low armor values compared to private servers, the increase in damage by DPS overshadows the increase in parry chance and parry haste by bosses. Now let's move on to Critical Strike and Critical Strike Suppression. So Critical Strike Suppression is a mechanic that reduces Critical Strike chance by 1% per every level a mob is above you. When fighting a boss, you will lose 3% crit from your total from stats, talents, buffs, gear, and consumables. This is totally unavoidable and weapon skill cannot reduce this. This will happen to all melee DPS and tanks. In addition to this, when fighting mobs three levels higher than you, so bosses, an additional flat crit reduction of up to 1.8% on crit from auras or non-agility based crit, so anything that's not agility based, exists as well. So theoretically, this means if you receive any crit from non-agility sources, buffs, consumables, talents, 1.8% will be negated on bosses. So so 3% plus 1.8% is 4.8%. 8% crit suppression. This will happen 100% of the time because even if you have all agility based crit, you still have talents that increase your crit. You're still going to have buffs that increase your crit. You're going to have a 4.8 reduction in crit. There's nothing you can really do about it. It's something to keep in mind. Yes, agility based crit is not counted in that 1.8 additional aura reduction, but it's going to come off from somewhere, right? Whether it's from talents, whether it's from gear, whether it's from consumables or buffs, just count it not being there. So whatever your total crit percentage is, just remove 4.8% of it. This is known as crit suppression. It has been confirmed by Blizzard via Blue Post. It's definitely going to be in Classic Wild. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go over how Critical Strike works with one roll systems, which are your white hits, and two roll systems, which are your yellow hits or special attacks. Now white hits are on a one roll system. Therefore, crit chance of white hits is equal to your observed crit rate across all white hits. And that's confusing, but we're going to talk about this in a second. So for white hits, crit is capped by your hit chance because crit is a lower priority outcome on that roll system them compared to dodge, parry, miss, glance, and block. So for example, we're going to go through a lot of examples to make this easy to understand. So let's first go with dual wielding. You're fighting a boss from the front with a plus five bonus to weapon skill. So either an orc or a human and 6% hit from gear. So the boss has a 14% chance to parry, a 6% chance to dodge you, a 5% chance to block you, a 40% chance that you're going to glance, and you have a 6% hit chance. So the leftover percentage for you to hit and or crit is only 16.60%. And that's if you have plus five bonus weapon skill and and 6% hit. So in other words, an 18.4% chance to miss. This means your white crit rate can't be higher than 16.6%. Even if you have more than that, that's all you can crit with white hits. However, because of suppression, you would need 21.4% crit just to get to that 16.6% because you're gonna lose 4.8 of it via crit suppression. Any crit over that number would be wasted and you would need to acquire more hit gear to make use of more crit to make more space in that roll, right? So out of 100% of that roll, that 6% hit is like a buffer for you to score a hit. So if the more hit you have, the more crit room you have. I hope that makes sense. But if you stare at the slide for a few minutes, I think you'll understand what I'm trying to get at. Now we have two more examples building off the previous one. Example one, you have only 10% crit. You lose 4.8 from crit suppression. So that leaves you at 5.2% crit. But since it's under that 16.6% cap, you get all of it. So for white hits below or at the cap, crit chance and crit as a percent of outcomes are the same thing. So your crit chance in this scenario is 5.2% and 5.2% of your attacks will be crits. Now let's pretend you have 25% crit. You lose 4.8% of it from crit suppression, leaving you 20.2%. But since that's over your 16.6% cap, you only get 16.6% crit. So if you wanted to make use of that missing 3.6%, you would have to increase your hit from from gear to raise your hit cap and this leaves more room in the equation this is confusing i understand it is but just spend some time looking at these slides and understand how hit can indirectly increase your crit chance as can your weapon skill because your weapon skill allows you to have more hit to play around with per se when it comes to stat priorities 
Now finally, let's go over the two roll, yellow hit or special attack critical strike chance. Yellow or special attacks are on a two roll system. When you use the yellow attack, first the game checks if you dodge, miss, or are parried. If a hit occurs, then two independent checks are made, one for a block and one for a crit. And because of this, blocks and crits can occur at the same time. This is known as a critical block. Because of the above rules, your observed crit for yellow hits will always be lower than your expected crit chance. So in essence, in theory, the crit cap for yellow attacks is 100%. Because it's already been determined by the first roll whether you connected on that attack or not. Now here's an example with 25% crit from gear, buffs, and talents. 4.8% is lost right off the bat from crit suppression, leaving 20.2% crit. However, you cannot use that entire amount for yellows regardless of the hit gear situation. 20.2% is the crit chance, but it's different from the percentage of attacks that actually become crits. If dodges, parries, and misses add up to 25%, that means 75% of the attacks will actually succeed, meaning leading up to a hit, a block, a crit, or both a block and crit. Of those 75%, 20.2% of them will be crits, meaning that across all attacks, I only have a 15.15% chance to crit. So because of the two roll system, the chance of you hitting is lower, and the crit is the percentage of that lower amount of hits, and your crit chance is actually the chance of a hit critting, if that makes sense. So in this example, since only 75% of your hits are actually connecting, 20.2% of that 75 can be a crit, so only 15.15%. I realize that this crit thing is kind of confusing, but just realize that yellow attacks will always be less likely to crit than your actual crit percentage is, after crit suppression, of course. Well, everyone, we did it. We got to the end of the Melee Mechanics Guide for Classic WoW. I couldn't have done it without, obviously, Meiji, his team over at Fight Club, Vilius, and the groundwork that was done by Beza so many years ago. Remember to go visit Fight Club on Discord, the link will be in the description, and all of the data collected by Meiji and his team, the spreadsheets, the GitHub links are all in the description below. Thank you all for watching this guide. If you like this content, leave a like. If you want to see more guides and other types of content we do here at Defcat Mail or on TV, consider subscribing because we have a lot more stuff coming. We do semi-regular podcasts, including GMA, Good Morning Azeroth, and Def Talk, which are listenable on SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, and Spotify. You can also follow the Def Camp Metal Run TV community on Discord and on Twitter. Links are in the description below. And follow my brother Def Camp on his streams at twitch.tv slash defcamp and on YouTube. Again, this guide, along with many others, will be available on ClassicWild.live, a hub for the Classic Wild community to upload content, including guides and other types of videos. We also have a lively forums and many tools on the website, including including the Azeroth Atlas and our interactive leveling guide, which lets you choose your race, your faction, your class, and your group composition for the most optimal leveling routes through classic Azeroth. Last but not least, I'd like to thank my patrons for making videos like this possible and continuing to support our channel. Also, in addition to the patrons, I'd like to thank the stream team, regular contributors of Def Camp Streams on Twitch and YouTube. Thank you all for watching. Keep on key binding and grinding, and I hope to see you all in classic Azeroth. Greetings, adventurers. Melderon here. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you'd like to sport some official Def Camp Melderon t-shirts and hoodies, head on over to Brand Young Media's Def Camp Melderon TV merchandise website. The link is in the description below.